Shimamanda, you said that you got involved in this project because you care. Uh, do you hope that uh, by writing your essay and you know also uh, uh, the you know the way in which uh, the other writers wrote their essays, you might uh, uh, you know make us all care about this? I'm starting to feel like a politician that's running for office. <laughs> <laughs> I care, I deeply care. I Th that would make me a Jeremy Paxman. That's me very uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, I, mean, I think that, that one always hopes that, um, that that you write something that might mean something at some point. But do I think that, I mean, I, if, if the question is whether I know what the effect will be, no, I don't know. But I just. Which one do you hope? I mean, what effect do you hope to have? <sighs> My dream is that the education minister in Nigeria will read it and suddenly have this wonderful aha moment where she will immediately call a meeting of all the permanent secretaries involved, all the people, her staff, um, start to teach more social studies that's contemporary and relevant for Nigeria, immediately discard the weight of history that I think burdens our education system, immediately <laughs> train all the teachers. This is right, this is this is what I wish would happen. You're launching your campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like well and also just I'm um, thinking about what Camilla said, which which is something I also feel very strongly about, which is sort of that divide in education, <clears throat> which I think has such grave consequences for, for countries. That you, in Nigeria, for example, I was so struck by how, on the one hand, we're educating people who will not live in Nigeria, and if they did live in Nigeria, would not understand Nigeria, because they're not even being, they're not being educated to take the Nigerian exams. So they're reading bits of things about the British healthcare system. And then I remember sitting there in that class while the teacher said, what does it cost? Five million pounds. And I just thought, what the F? You know, this is a country where nobody's saying Naira, we use Naira. Just the, the fact that it seemed to me that the students didn't realize how just absurd this was. I, I just found it, I just, I just found it um, mind-boggling, really. And then on the other hand, of course, that, that so, so it means to, I, I wonder what's going to happen in 30 years, this generation that we are educating, what's going to happen to Nigeria? And I say this and I sort of, I feel like a, a, a right-wing commotion saying, you know, what's happening and things are... Fun. But I think they are, because I think that when I was growing up, there was a bit of a middle, right? So we had, and what I talk about, federal government colleges, we had um, these colleges where ostensibly people of different classes, um, and I mean social class, could, could come together and be educated and get a very good education. And... And not only were you putting people of different social classes together, you're putting people from different parts of Nigeria together. So that in, in ways what, you're, what I think the federal government colleges did was sort of start to maybe give people a sense of what a nation was, what Nigeria was. Um, and I don't think they read about the British healthcare system in those federal government colleges. <laughs> right? But now those government college, federal government colleges are just, um, they're very much in decline. We, we just increasingly have people either going to the government schools that are just not, <coughs> not very good, and or they're going to these private schools that are either run by churches, which are even more problematic in my opinion, because in addition to teaching them math and English, you're sort of, you know, you have crazy ideas like pregnancy tests for girls before you can get admitted. So anyway, it's, <laughs> so, so just back to, I, I, my hope would be that somebody would read that. Do I think it will happen? When I'm being practical, no. When I'm being hopeful, yes, anything is possible. I'm sort of a believer in this kind of crazy and reasonable hope. So, so you never know. So I, I just wish that somebody would read that and think we need to do something. And, I, and, I, and we need to do something urgently. I sort of, and I think it's doable. I think that, I mean, I'm also a believer in, 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 in what the government can do. Right? So um, I don't think, for example, that all of our schools should be run for profit or that... Um, you know, private schools are good. I think people should have that choice. But I also really feel very strongly about about governments running schools that are affordable. I just think that you know, I love how Camila said human beings. <laughs> I really think that's what it should be about. That human beings should have a chance. I think that um, you know, when you have a bright kid who's in a rural area and who can't afford it, that sort of thing. But yeah, so I believe very much in government policy, and I think that 
it's so doable. It really is. I mean, it, it would be perfect, but it can, it, it can be done. So I will stop my ranting now. You know, I love that attitude, in fact, because you know, he has been saying that uh, uh, optimism becomes optimism precisely in times of hopelessness and crisis, and, and we are living uh, such times. I mean, the problem you describe is a worldwide problem.